Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? It's your boy Player X here with the Semi Limited Podcast. What's going on? Haven't talked to you guys in a while. I was on vacation last week, so I had to take some time off just to, you know, the holiday stuff. Had to get the life situated. For those who don't know, I do a lot of music outside of uh, podcasting Yu Gi Oh stuff, so I had to take care of that. I got a couple shows lined up, so, you know, just kind of juggling my time here and there. So I, I do apologize for you guys. For not having anything on Friday, but we will make it up with a couple special announcements, and I also have special guests tonight, as well as some really interesting talking points for tonight, including the ban list that Konami didn't announce that they dropped, uh, that we're going to be getting into. The one, a ban list that you may not uh, quite know about so far. But before we get into all that, you guys know what we have to do. Go through all the plug-ins. So, speaking of plug-ins, shout-outs to Unplugged Gaming in Manly's New York for sponsoring the podcast. Uh, be sure to join their Discord server. It's going to be in the description box below, and you can be a part of all of the TCG communities that they have there. Uh, you can do it on there. Join their Discord. Join maybe the Yu-Gi-Oh! one, maybe the Lorcana one, if that's what you're into. I know that their Magic one's really big, as every Magic OTS, I guess, really is. Uh, but you can go down there, join all their uh, TCGs, get acquainted with all the people that will be in your locals, maybe find some trades, some people to practice with, and then go to the store in Manlius. And if you do, guys, if you guys pop up, be sure to mention Semi Limited Podcast, and they will be sure to hook you guys up. So shout outs to Joe Campbell and all the boys over there, all the staff over at Unplugged Gaming. While you're down there in that description box, be sure to click on that link tree link. It, you'll also find it down below. It, it will link you to all of our social sites. As soon as you click it, a bunch of tabs pull up with maybe the Google podcast, the Apple podcast, the Spotify, got the YouTube on there. It's got the Facebook. It's got the X. It's got all the apps that all you youngins be using nowadays. Just be sure to go on there, click it, and follow all of those sites. Click subscribe, follow, notification bell, whatever you got to do. Just be sure you're interacting with those pages. Uh, we will be giving away another giveaway when we hit 50 followers on TikTok and we also 100 followers on X and 200 followers on Instagram and YouTube because we are really climbing on there, especially with YouTube and dropping all the short contents on there. And I appreciate you guys for interacting with it and showing the love. So be sure to go get your friends to go in there. Follow all the sites. That way we can give back to you guys even more. I've sent packages out to Italy. I've sent packages to Virginia. And I plan to send a whole bunch more packages as the podcast continues to grow. So thank you to you guys as well. Also, you guys can be sure to catch Brad, a.k.a. Mr. Perfect, every Saturday at Twitch, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's the East Coast of the United States for those who are watching outside of it. Uh, his Twitch will be also in the link tree down below above ours. You can go catch him deck theorying. He's been doing a lot of Master Duel content lately. Also, he, he was grinding for the OTS Championship, which we'll be getting into a little bit later on. And he was uh, interacting with the uh, crowds from out there. So be sure to go and ju jump in his chat, interact with him. And when we link up at our meetings, so be sure to let me know about it and you might even find yourself on the podcast on our friday night wrap-ups so once again 11 p.m eastern standard time every saturday night on twitch the link is down below and the last announcement i have for you guys is something more of like an experimental project i wanted to do something really big for you guys as i said i was uh, you know apologetic that i wasn't able to get you guys uh episode last week so what i want to do is actually get you guys the listener involved in one of the episodes for the semi-limited podcast and by this i mean for the end of the year at some point in time so sometime within the month of december i'm not quite sure yet i'll have to schedule it all out make sure it's all good I will be doing a live recorded episode of the Semi-Limited Podcast where you, yourself, the listener, can join in. It'll be in our Discord. You'll be able to go to our Discord in that link tree link down below. Join our Discord and we will have a Semi-Limited Live section, which is basically just a live group where you'll join in and I'll have you guys up on a podium and you'll come up, say some things. We will debate some of the topics, give your point of views, maybe talk about some things you want to get off your chest or whatever, and then we'll... Uh, pass the buck along and then you know get you guys involved in the podcast as well so that'll be more close to the end of the year so be sure to watch out for that but we will be doing a live recorded episode for you guys to enjoy but getting into today's episode like i said we got a whole bunch of things on the docket for today and i want to be sure that we get through it all but i do want to introduce our guests we have a bunch of our guests from uh, the Brother Sister podcast. Three out of the four. Unfortunately, the fourth one is not able to make it. He's been practicing uh, for a bunch of the athletic things he's been getting into, and we'll probably brush over that. But be sure to give all the love in the world to the three amigos, Mr. Mel, Mr. Nick, and Mr. Joe. Hey, y'all. What's going on? Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. That was scrumptious. I like mm, it. You like that? Yeah, that yeah, is... yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, How are you guys tonight? Doing good? I, I wanted to clear it up a little. We're amazing. I speak for everybody. Um, 
<laughs> Vanquish old Joe. And I am the undefeated king of Q's. Oh but my I only god. Was I'm, no, 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 but I'm I was only defeated you. three times. I was only defeated three times. Anyway, carry on. Sorry. No, you weren't. You weren't. You weren't. I'm, I'm Nick. Hello. And I'm Mel. <laughs> Joe, you literally <laughs> lost the first match you went in the against the Syracuse people. <laughs> He's so yeah, bad. He did. That's why I just it's ignore a, him right now. It's a title. It's a title. Uh, it's a title. Yeah, yeah, it's a working title. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so any link-ins or any plugins you guys got before we get into today's episode? But obviously, you know, if you can give our podcast a listen, Heart of the Podcast, uh, we re- try and record as much as we can. We were going to today, but life happened. Jorge, for those who don't know, ran a marathon over the weekend. And shout out to George. That, shout out to him. Uh, mm-hmm. The longest distance he ran preparing for that marathon was three miles. And for those like who don't crazy. know, a marathon is 26 miles. So he got oh my god an eighth, almost an eighth of the way there. Yeah. But he finished it, and we're very proud of him for that. <laughs> proud yeah, of him too. That's something I would not to say I, I would never be that. able to do, but I would not do that. I mean, basically, I just like to. go listen to our podcast because um, we're funny. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Well, <laughs> some of us have their podcast. We have good. We have yeah, great. Some takes. of them more than others. I think I, I don't know about great the, takes. I appreciate the compliment. I am some of us have great <laughs> takes. Some of us just say the most unbelievable shit. You'd my takes are my take. I uh, name one take I've ever met said that's been wrong. Block dragon. Block dragon. Black dragon's a good I'm take. About to say, you know everyone unanimously. Right. <laughs> block dragon. You know, you know that I'm right. Fucking, <laughs> fucking delicious <laughs> memory <laughs> ass bullshit. Imperial yeah. order. Yeah. Deli- yeah. Delicious yeah. to zero. Delicious to zero would kill the deck. Good. You can still play Adam Spader. No, you can't. You Man, could. What, where's the list, Mel? Tell me the list. It doesn't matter. Not the same. Uh, Tell me the list, Mel. <laughs> you ain't got the answer, this. Sway. <laughs> we, we, we I don't play the deck. It's not my job to figure it out. Get, we get, can't derail get... X's uh, podcast like we do ours, so let's stay on topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you guys are good. Yeah. Uh, but getting into today's episode, now that we've got the gang all introduced in here for you, uh, the OTS Championship for Millennium Games for the Western New Yorkers took place out there in Rochester, New York. It was quite eventful. For those that went, there was a 50-plus players there, which means that they had seven mm-hmm count them seven long rounds to go through they had um at least 10 plus players coming from Q's as well if i could remember so i'm going to try to spitball a couple off the top of my head we had shout outs to austin shout outs to albert brandon and noah shout outs to josh rock devon smith shout outs to uh daryl rupert shout outs to brad shout outs to ian shout outs to joey walters all going out there having fun and Thanks. and and everyone else who went there too that didn't announce it giuseppe jake all them uh, so shout out to you guys as well. It was seven long rounds, as I said, that ensued until there was eight duelists left who emerged the strongest of the 50 plus uh, to make it to the heated top eight. And those were as follows. Your top eight for the OTS championship are eighth place, Austin Despa, and seventh place, Brendan Agnant, which is the Q's crew. So shout out to them. Much love for them for breaking through and getting to the top slots. Uh, in sixth place, we had Brian from Crush Cards. He was actually doing pretty well that day. And then we have fifth place as Johnny Vu from Buffalo. Then we have Christopher Bielazuski. If I butchered that, I apologize. I'm very high. We have third place yeah. being Joe Vu. Uh, second place being Alessandro Cierfalo. Uh And then we also have first place after Swiss, Anthony Figueroa, he's also known as the Figs. So shout out to Figs for doing uh, the damn thing. And two of the Q's guys went into top eight. It was a marathon though and not a race. So sadly, Austin was taken out by Figs, having to be paired for the eighth seed and the one seed in top eight. And then while Brendan played well all throughout the day, his streak was brutally ended in top four uh, by the winner of the event, Brian from Crush Card. So congrats to him as well for taking it home. Uh, Brendan unfortunately had a very, very Poor opening uh, game one, wasn't able to play through Brian who won the die roll and then he just scooped it up early thinking that he'd have a better fight in games two and three. And in games two, he opened one, I think memory or one memory spell, then he had three Ash and one Crow. And of course, yeah, when he activated the memory, it got uh, Imperm, the cat that he brought out. And he actually, I think, passed to him, realized that the gas he had was not going to be enough, and then just proceeded to scoop. It was a very, very swift game, but Brennan gave it his hardest all day. Yeah, it was a little rough just because uh, you you don't really take anything from there. It's not like you you deck build it wrong, you know, because you're supposed Mm -hmm. to play Ash at three. You're supposed to play cards like Crow. Obviously, you just didn't see your engine. Uh, Game one, I think it was not so much that 
he misplayed, but he was facing down a formidable board and then just with the cards he had at his disposal, just wasn't able to make a count, thinking that he'd be able to, you know, come through game two and then finish out close closer game three, but it just didn't really work that way. So it's not like he would he did bad, still proud of the man. You know, he got another invite racked up. So he's uh I think his goal was to get the map, but he also wound up stealing an invite from someone. So, you know. Classic yeah. Pirelli losing to themselves. Mm, it happens. Nothing you yeah, can do. It, it was it was really good. I mean, he really did do uh, um, like a, a great run. I heard he was. Yeah. Uh, I think he only lost once. There were so many X ones uh, that were basically there. I'm very proud of all the Q Steelers. As a matter of fact, everyone who came out there uh, with a couple honorable mentions to some of the guys who missed Top Cup but were within the top 20. We had 13th place is Noah Clay, so shout out to him. And then 14th place, we had our own Josh Schrock, one of the Splash Bros. All the X1s were in that one pool, so it just really came down to your tiebreakers as mm -hmm. far as I'm aware of, and he just didn't have mm -hmm. the best ones. So, um, But they all did great, uh, even though they were slighted by the Konami point system. And then yeah. for those who are curious, the deck profile that uh, for Brendan's top four Prairie list will be up on the channel sometime later on this week. For those who are curious, so you can go check out that YouTube as I've already stitched and plugged down below to catch it when it drops. I want to say it'll drop Wednesday, if not, probably Thursday, but definitely before the next episode for you guys. Yeah, send it over to Mel. That's right. Yeah, so Mel, Mel can probably. go down there and, and uh, top four his. You, you won't win, obviously. In the finals, you'll you'll brick on three Ash, but you know you'll get. What was um, What was Fix playing? Do we know? Uh, I want to say Horus Sinful, but I'd have mm -hmm. to talk again with Austin, who played uh, him, and just uh, talk about what he was playing, not what she was playing. So, have you guys ever been to an OTS championship before? Yes, uh, our other local spot, Gamers Choice, has them. Uh, I've been to them a couple times. Um, yeah. They usually get. Yeah. You know, 40 to 50 people as well. Yeah, it's a small yeah, OTS. Well, yeah. Not yeah, everybody knows about it. Same here. I've been to a couple. It's uh, it's fine. It's a fine yeah. time. Is uh, yeah. Gamer's Choice one of the biggest card shops in the boroughs out of all in of them? The, it's the biggest. It's definitely it's the biggest. In the whole country. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's pretty big. No, he's, he's, um, he's going. <laughs> the intro. <laughs> cat. <laughs> Drop the cat. Um, no, Joe Gamer's House? Choice has the... It's the biggest in New York City. They have the biggest space, the most competitive of the scenes as well um yeah. and it's the most accessible for people in the city it's right off a couple it's right off the subway line that connects basically all of manhattan to the rest of the boroughs so oh so it's, it's a, like perfect it's location a, to a, yeah, oh, yeah yeah it's oh, a yeah. Sunny, sunny side over there i believe if i recall yeah. correctly yeah there, it's uh it's a good ots too it's yeah nice. a well run uh lots of cards that are available they have they've actually been hosted they've been either hosting or uh vending at a lot of the ycs's that have been coming up uh they're yeah, they've kind right. of made a name for themselves so it's very cool for them especially yeah they've got they've, 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 they sell basically yeah. like everything and their prices are generally pretty good yeah they started yeah. as an only Yu-Gi-Oh shop now they do one piece pokemon magic all they do all of the card games pretty much yeah okay so i mean so you obviously had the chance to experience an ots down there would you like think it's a little bit more different than uh some of the regionals you guys have went to do you consider a top at an oc or lts championship more of like a compared to like a top at a regional or would you say that they're kind of like different in their own way well <laughs> i can tell you my opinion i just don't know if it's true i mean i take well, regional yeah, tops. Go ahead, say with your chest I, I i take regional tops way more seriously i think ots tops are cute but i don't know if they necessarily count as much as a regional top because uh and you can correct me if i'm wrong i think regionals typically have uh, way more people and I think of well, regionals depends, as yeah. more, it does depend, you know, but I think of, I, I, I typically think of regionals as way more competitive. I think even, you know, regionals, people show up from like all around. Uh, OTSs is more like the local community and that's fine. But uh, I, I like, let me put it this way. If I'm uh, trying to look at a deck list for ideas on what I might do with my own deck and uh, I, I see OTS champion versus like uh, regional top, I OTS top is not as impressive to me. How about that? feel about it. I'm on the opposite spectrum of that, honestly. I think uh, OTS is just as uh, just as good as the regional, at least speaking for Gamer's Choice. Um, we do have a lot of good players from there, and it's just you know it's just as competitive as a regional. Um, just as many players, and you know it's it, most of the people there. Like we have your, I would say ten to ninety percent. Uh, ten percent being people are casually playing and 90% of the people in there are actually going there to win and try try themselves out how they would stack up in a regional so people in there are really going at their best so 
I think winning at an OTS in Gamers Choice in specific is just the same as a regional. Any, anywhere else, I'm not sure. I think if it's smaller, then obviously we can't compare that to a regional. Definitely depends on location, yeah. 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 I would, no. I'd probably, I'm kind of, as much as I didn't want to do this, I'm kind of in between. I think regionals, you're going to get more people, but I think OTSs, you're going to get, it's a bit, sometimes a bit more, st a bit stiffer competition because if you go there consistently, you're playing people that know what you're doing, know what you're playing. Whereas at a regional, you're getting that, like, sometimes people don't know what you're doing all the time or what you're playing. And so you can get that sort of surprise factor but OTS you're oftentimes pairing up against people that you've played against before so it's a little harder to say definitively mm. I know that I can do this at this OTS championship because somebody might just be like oh I know that you're playing Pirelli so I know you can't kill me in one turn if I don't put a monster on the board so I'm gonna pass and hope that you and like I'll interrupt you and then I'll kill you on the next turn whereas mm. a regional like nobody's gonna do that because yeah you gotta be careful at a, at, a, at a regional you gotta kind of have to like yeah they uh, wouldn't know better yeah, yeah. I will say regionals can... regionals are I would say more fun because you get a bunch a lot of different people there also more vendors so you can get a wider variety of cards. Mm -hmm. And you get to travel which is always cool. Oh yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I mean I think you can't travel for OTSs I get that. But I do yeah. I, I think I would agree more with Mel's standpoint of being on the fence because I do as much as my heart agrees with Nick whereas just that even title if you, let's say I put up a YouTube thumbnail and I said mm -hmm. top four regional deck list, I would think I would watch that over a top four OTS championship deck list. But that's not to say that I'm taking away from their win because you still have to win. Someone had said something about a regional being bigger. And for those who don't know, when YCS or Richmond was going on, there was a regional in Hawaii. And for those who don't know, Hawaii is not that big of a place. And not only that, but there's even fewer duelists there. I think, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, there was like less than 20 people at that regional. And I only know this because the top, the, the winning <laughs> deck list was announced and in the top cut was a Cash Tira player. And I had looked up the regional and it was like a 19 person regional. So <laughs> I was like, all right, well that kind of, that to me yeah. discredits what that guy did more than if it was at an OTS with like 50 people, you know what I'm saying? So like. Not yeah. to say I would say that the type of event is where I'm more picky at. I'm more picky at the actual region of the event. Some people don't know, but Florida, states oh, states like Florida, states like uh, Texas have way higher population mm -hmm. and players per like square area. And like they have, they breed YCS champions. They yeah. breed world's competitors. Like they, they have real players down in those areas. So like a regional down there it's 10 times harder than maybe your toughest OTS championship anywhere else. But if you go to an OTS championship in Florida or Texas, you might be playing more or more difficult players or more having a more difficult time than you would at a bigger regional playing 250 different, you know, different players. So no, you're, I really you're, just you're, think it comes yeah. down to the region. Yeah, it's it's regionally dependent. The other thing is like, a, I mean, in, in reality, like to me, what I think of as the like the pinnacle of like really proving that you're doing really well is uh, if you top a YCS, you really that's that's pretty incredible. Uh, but yeah, it's very regionally dependent, like uh, even like the uh, the Rochester uh, regional or uh, I guess OTS is uh, almost as big as the New York City one, even though New York City has, you know, more like it's very densely populated. So I would actually even argue like. I don't know. The the one up there might even be a little more competitive. There's a lot of really strong players there. But, uh, you know, I don't know. So when are we going to Hawaii? Uh, probably, you want to pay $4,000 to get probably, there? Go yeah, ahead. Pr probably never, I would say. <laughs> the, the other thing is, Yo, uh, I actually... I want to let it be known. Hold on. I just want to let it be known that the only way Joe's getting his invite is if he goes to Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> King of Qs, bro. King of Qs. Well, the other thing is this. Look, you better I'm be, be King of Honolulu, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be really honest, too. Like, the uh, the other thing is, uh, I like like I know Worlds is like a big deal, but I have a hard time caring about Worlds because it's not the format that I play. Like, I I'm just being that. really I, honest. Like, yeah. I and I actually really hate that about Yu-Gi-Oh. I I kind of wish that like the split in the format would go away forever and they would just combine it into the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game or whatever. I don't like the whole OCG TCG split. I think it's really 
uh, fucking stupid. But that's probably off track. But so like like Worlds was cool. You know, I watched Worlds a little bit on Twitch, but I had a hard time caring because I was like, what's? I don't even know. Like, uh, they're they're basically playing a different game. To be honest with you. I just yeah. the only thing I really we're gonna cut away to worlds real quick because I do agree with you like I think it's silly that you have to have a combined ban list because it hinders the deck building from both regions to now you're playing something very thrown together it feels like and yeah and you didn't have time to practice long to probably, think about it. You know exactly I mean? you don't yeah. have that much time to like deck theory deck test because you don't know what sets are legal until an x amount of time before worlds yes so not only mm -hmm. that you're playing a different format or a different like type of style of play that you got really good with like a, let's just take for example cash Tira, which is really good at the time cash Tira mm -hmm. is that one basically for every card in the ocg so now you're telling me that the deck i'm more comfortable with that i would be a world's class competitor for basically the deck that got me here i can't play i gotta play something else you know what i'm saying yeah like or it's so neutered that it's not even really worth playing it does yeah exactly. kind of, that, feel, that feels a little bad that's the only thing i don't really like like about it on the opposite side of that i feel like it really encourages the deck building uh skill out of a player and you know adaptability so i mean if you're a good good player you know how to pilot any deck uh in the meta currently then you'll adapt to it so i think any player that already is going into that event you know they're, they're not like it, it is a hindrance but they'll be fine you're a good player or you can no, be agree. Like, that's the whole point. you can be poly yeah. and just be like you know what everything's at one in dragons I'm, a fucking I'm just win gonna dragons. play dragon, yeah. I'm just All I need win. is one dragon. That's, I need that's one fair. of everything. Yeah, that's fine. I'll do it. it. Strikers at one, the deck is yeah. forever good. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Dragon is a unique circumstance, but <laughs> you know, yeah. Point taken, though, Mel. Honestly. But speaking of Polly Aronson, getting on to the next topic we had today, Konami actually dropped a ban list. I don't that know if you guys actually heard. <laughs> and it wasn't a ban list on cards like most people would be anticipating for, but. If most people don't know, Konami also has a ban list for players as well. That being banned from a Konami sanctioned event gets you put on a list with others to see uh, as a brief label for the reason for your banishment. So they have, I think it's a uh, unsportsmanlike uh, severe and then an unsportsmanlike minor. And basically it usually is, has something to do with cheating or something around speculative of cheating in one way, shape or form. But they don't really speculate on the type of punishment that they're receiving. They just say that, all right, you're getting this severe or you're getting this minor. We're not going to give you a reason. They just speak little to the actual reason or the specifics for being banned. Just that, oh yeah, here you are. You're banned now. And this is how long you'll be banned from this date to this date. And there's not really an appeal. You can try to appeal it, but we're, we've already probably made up our minds and it's kind of yeah. done from there. Uh, but updates to the ban list for Konami are, uh, as well as returning players, are always being added off the list. Uh, for the, you guys who are available, oh, sorry, who guys who are curious can see that the list is available on the Konami website for those interested in just taking a peek and just you know seeing who's on or off. Uh, mm -hmm. Names like Distant Coder uh, was recently released from the ban list. He received his ban for slander against a Konami judge. He was bashing the judges that was allowing another player, I don't remember the player's name off the top of my head, uh, who was advocating for cheating and he was saying- It was, uh, yeah. it was uh, what's his name? It was a uh, fucking Duel Links, Duel Links meta. It was DK. DK, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah him, him and DK were going through it. And um, so he was slandering the judge that was kind of siding or ruling more with DK that allowed him to do that. And he publicly went about slandering this judge and actually received a ban from it. And so that's something I, that no people really know about the rule book is that you're not supposed to slander publicly about the judge. The judge is ruling or final. You're not supposed to argue him, yada, yada. So he actually just recently came off of his ban. Other players had their time on the ban list extended that you'd think that they would get off. Uh, players like Susu, who was actually on the, uh, the Heart of the Podcast mm -hmm. uh, segment. God. He was actually yeah, interviewed by them. So yeah, he yeah. came on and he's from Head to Head Battles and he received his ban list back in 2022 for uh, having an alcoholic drink visible while he was playing in a remote dual tournament. For those who don't know, you have to have your camera pointed at you at all times. He happened to be at his house. He's chilling, you know, he's, you know, enjoying the game at his leisure. And mm -hmm. he happened to have his drink or something that was there. Maybe it was an old can or whatever it was, but something was visible on his screen and someone wound up reporting him to the head judge. The head judge had to you know, take action and he actually wound up getting suspended because of it. But no comment was given as to why 
they extended his duration because he was supposed to get off September 2022. And actually, he's now suspended, if I'm not mistaken, until May of 2024. And was given no reason as to why right. now it's being extended for more punishment without reason. That's just crazy right. to me. And then you got peer, people who are getting put on the ban list this year, such as players like our reigning world champion, Paulie Aronson. We've been talking about him a couple times tonight, uh, but Paulie Aronson actually just wanted himself on the ban list for a minor in unsportsmanlike, but it also is considered cheating. Uh, that's what the label that comes through when it goes down there. So not only do you have these people kind of hopping on and off the list, but it's like always for various reasons and they never specify what that person did to get on the ban list. So it, it never, like, it's always just self-perpetuating. Like, no one's ever going to figure out, oh, I can't do this because of this. Oh, I can't do this because of this. Luckily, players like Pauly like, took to social media to try to clear their name and explain what happened, uh, what got him banned in the first place, uh, which we'll get into a little bit shortly. But most of these people don't even know why. Like, if you ask Susu why he got banned, he knows that he was for the alcoholic drink, but no one knows why it got extended they don't tell you why even when you go for an appeal they just tell you oh yeah your appeal was taken and yeah we said no or all right okay yeah we we understand your plea we'll overturn it but like there's no chatter between the two like there's no like context like, i just think that that's a little bit off-putting to me personally i don't know about you guys no i think it's fucked i think that's i fucked. i do want to say it's very on brand for konami that mm. just like the banished zone has no clear zone the banished people for Konami from the ban list have no clear reason why. Yeah, I don't, I don't like very that. Very on brand. I don't like that at all, actually. Um, to be honest, you can monitor, like you can check the the judge there. If you go into Konami's website, there's a there's like there's the rule book and then there's the like penalty book for judges. You can look at that, but that is a, it's an it's not an exhaustive list. It, there's a very because mm -hmm. it's hard to have an exhaustive list with people and like actions, but. It's very, I found it very intriguing to, like, I watched the Susu battle, we talked to, the Susu uh, conversation, we talked to him as well. It's very surprising that there's not really a clear, like, this is why we did it. Like, they'll tell you, yeah, this is why we did it, but it's like, okay, this is, like, Susu's big thing was, like, somebody also said he was drunk on stream, and it's like, he's like, bro, I'm a nurse, and I'm 280 pounds of muscle. Like, I'm not drunk. I know what it's like to be drunk. Well, and it's just, yeah, and I also don't like the idea of Konami, like, policing what you're doing in your own house as long as you're right. not like in threatening yeah. the other player if you didn't like... go to a venue that's a different story <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Like, you can't in be my yeah, personal yeah, yeah. opinion if you're maybe fucking... i'm bringing emotions or some shit to it but like in my the sanctity of my own house where i'm playing my cards you know what i'm that's saying what I'm like saying. if yeah. i'm gonna get turned i'll get turned you know what i'm saying yeah, if i were to smoke I... a cigarette on stream is that something that is not allowed even though you can go so outside and smoke at a at a venue like, yeah, that's a little ridiculous. I, to be I think the biggest the biggest shortcoming of all this is, you know, Konami at the end of the day, they at the end of the day they will do whatever they want. It's their mm -hmm. card game, it's their rules. Great. The thing that they're missing the most is the communication between them and the player base. We yeah, don't have just, yeah. just as just as much as like, you know, let, let's take Suzu for example. Well, we don't know why his time got extended, but if we had somebody to explain it and be like, hey, this is why and this is why, and it's like, okay, cool, those are the rules. It, it sucks, but at least we understand. But now we, we just get left in the dark and then it just it, it aggravates the player base more. Um, it's yeah. just a lack of communication in several parts of Konami where, you know, even for the regular balance for cards, uh, we, we have a severe lack of communication yes, there. Yeah, even, 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 um, I don't know. It's just communication. That's, that's where the fault lies in yes. and it's what's causing the frustration. I'm sure there is reasons behind a lot of, uh, the events and things that happen, but without an explanation, those reasons seem just, you know, pretty out of pocket. And the only and thing I'll do... No, go ahead, Mo, sorry. I was going to say, and it, it would be understandable if Konami was not very clear in other aspects. So, like, Konami is extremely clear with everybody on release dates for products. Like, they clearly yep. have the capacity yeah. to be extremely clear. Yep. Yep. They yep. can tell you... They'll tell you exact that website at some point gets updated with exactly what cards are there and exactly the rarity. So they have the capacity to be very deliberately clear with their audience and, like... They'll, they put out briefs so they're like, oh, we're like, we're showing off the new cards. Here's every YouTuber that's going to be talking about it in multiple countries. Like there's a very clear ability to be clear. And in this instance, it's just not, it's frustrating. I'm glad you brought up the ban list, Joseph, because that's a, that's a really good example too, where it's like, right. you can be 
very you can have a very definitive ban list date date and set that and honor it, like most other card games do yes yes they do uh the pro the other thing is with like with konami i think they're a uh in a lot of ways they are a very old school company mm -hmm. and part of that is just not being communicative and um it's really frustrating but i feel like there's no recourse you know like if for example if susu's like thinks that's unreasonable there's no like there's nowhere for him to go to appeal that decision because it's their game and it's their company so it just feels bad i think in general i um i don't know i don't love it i i really don't like the way that they uh that they do stuff with uh ban list communication be it the card game itself or the player base so right. i don't know it's that's but it but it feels bad and there's just kind of nothing that we can that we can do we, uh, I, no, I agree completely yeah, yeah. I am potent the one thing that I'm potentially very not scared of because I don't really play it, but luckily for like the Susus and the distant coders and uh, Polly as well, they like Master Duel does exist, so they're still able to do their streaming content. I am very concerned, and I don't want to be putting something into the world or the air, but ether. the ether. If that band then extends to Master Duel, then it becomes a very problematic thing of like yeah. You're banned from the TCG. Will also ban you from the other aspects. So you yeah, can't anything really Konami it. affiliated, not just right. You know? well, yeah, because uh, now, well, now, you, now you're fucking with some people's livelihoods, actually. Right. Because like, Su, like Susu, for example, he, he he streams, right? So if if it's also like, now you're not going to be able to play Master Duel. It's like, all right, man. Well, like this is what he does to earn money. So right. so now it's becoming like that. That rubs me the wrong way. But I unfortunately, I don't want to put it out there, man. But I. I see it but right i'm thankful that it's not the case right now but i that when we see that video of like i got banned from master duel then people should really start getting concerned well to, to play not devil's advocate but just to sort of like placate those who think that could possibly happen that would be very difficult to do because you you'd have to ban their ip address and even then you could just go play somewhere else you so, could, so, but so, you'd but lose you access mean. to all those cards that you like. You'd have to start from scratch. And no man, I because hear, I hear you. It would be horrible. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's I not it's not necessarily a gotcha game, but like having to redo that entire thing that would be really frustrating. I, well, the, I, and the, they would potentially run into legal troubles with that because, uh, it, it, you know, it's an ex it's actually a fairly expensive game, uh, all things considered. So. If you were to ban people from playing Master Duel and they had dropped like hundreds and hundreds of dollars on these packs, you know, you can make an argument that like, like I bought those products, you know what I mean? Like I own them d digitally at least. I'm sure it's somewhere in the terms and conditions though. Actually, you know, those things that we don't read, they probably got something in there, man. They got look. Well, that's what I'm saying. All right. Yeah. So to so a certain extent, you got to, we got to be honest with ourselves here. We have to take accountability for our actions. And I'm not trying to take that away from anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, Susu did have an alcoholic breakout. Polly did re-enter a tournament. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, I'm going to mm -hmm. go into the Polly post too. So we do have to take our own accountability towards that. True. But what I do think is, as you guys are starting to nod towards, Konami should be more vocal about those things. If you're going to ban somebody like our world reigning champion yeah. and then label it as unsportsmanlike cheating that just does not have a a nice taste in the mouth for okay. not only the representation for your player base because he's now your game's world champion mm -hmm. but also for like where he comes from the, the na our first champion is is now getting labeled as like a cheater like that's gonna skew and slander his name like I, and he's such a great guy too so it's not like i'm I'm not trying to put like you know emotions into it, but like he's a great guy, and I just this isn't something that I would deem as quote unquote cheating. So, if I can get really quick, I'm going to read off the post that actually Polly Polly posted on social media on his Facebook, and just so we can get some context for those who don't know, he says today I received a six month suspension from organized play. Too long, didn't read. I accidentally registered for a remote duel with a non-viable deck list, dropped, and then re-registered, taking a round one loss with the corrected deck list. I thought this was okay because I was also taking the round one loss, so it seemed no different than someone late registering in the first place. It turns out this is still against tournament policy, so they had to disqualify me later on. 
I actually looked it up myself later on that night, and it's right there in the policy document, bottom of page 28. You may not drop from an event and re-register in an attempt to submit a new deck list. To be clear, I never sat down to play with anyone round one. I stated my intention to drop and re-register before round one was ever posted, and I was transparent about what I was doing and why. But a policy violation is a policy violation, even if I thought it wasn't one. Ultimately, it's a learning experience, and the lesson is, it's always good to learn and be knowledgeable about policy as you can. And if you think you found a clever workaround, you should probably double check first. I won't be around for a while, and I'm sorry guys, but fortunately, I only received a six month suspension for this violation, so I'll be back around for Worlds. See you then. Now, that's a man owning his accountability and saying, yeah, you know, I fucked up. It's right there in the rule book. I didn't read it over. It wasn't in like the, the biggest text, but some, a judge should have caught that. I think when he yes. tried to re-register, like yep. telling them, hey, if you do this, you're going to like be disqualified yeah, yeah, and yeah. then written up. This isn't yeah. something where you're just DQ'd from the event. Oh, well, try again tomorrow. This is something where you're DQ'd and I have to write you up as a severe mm -hmm. enough to get banned. That's crazy to me. Like well, that we're just gonna slap that label for something as minuscule as re-registering with pure intent out in the open. So expressing to the judges, this is what happened and this is why no malicious intent, but to extend his own playing ability within that tournament. So that's where I kind of stand with that. Well, yeah. well look, let, let me let me add, let, let me just also add just to this. Like the thing is, uh, I'll draw here. I'll draw on my experience as an educator. When when a kid breaks a rule, right? Uh, you don't automatically throw the book at them and go, "Yo, listen, listen, man, uh, you broke this rule." So according to the chancellor's handbook, uh, this is what happens. That that's not what you do. Typically, you 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 like talk to them first. So you like you have like levels, right? Like where if a kid does even with something like cheating, like on an exam or whatever. You know, technically, if a kid cheats on an exam, you're supposed to give them a zero, report them, and it goes in their permanent record. But that doesn't normally happen, right? Like the first time it happens, you might even like talk to the kid, be like, "Hey, man, I saw what you were doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you retake this, right?" And then, like, like that's a reasonable way to apply rules and follow rules, but also not be a little bit uh, unreasonable and a little too stiff. And I think that's part of the problem is that the rules are a little too stiff. I understand. Like, I understand. I, I like I get I get I get what they're saying in terms of why they have people on the list, but there's also room for flexibility, and I think that their fact that they're being very inflexible about, in my opinion, very silly things. I, I just I don't know. I think that they. It seems to me like there's not really someone who looks over those things, and it's kind of like very uh. Uh, mechanized where there's not like a human face behind it that's like hey so he re-registered with a new list he can't do that that's cheating like it should really be hey man you yeah. can't play in this tournament sorry but we'll let it slide but just know hey for example just so you know on page 28 it says this so please don't do that again in the future or we will put you on the list do you know what i mean exactly. like i i just think that's a or little take silly. the dq give him the dq whatever yeah. like i get it you violated policy yeah, yeah. i even give it to that degree you violated policy i don't yeah. care if you're a world champion i don't care if you're a guy who just started my, my brother went to a regional with a master dual deck list and it was playing verte anaconda which was a banned card in the main mm. deck put it in his <laughs> registration and everything slipped and slide nobody said anything about it until after round one when he summoned it and the judge got called on him and in my head i'm like well damn if he entered it like that someone should have been checking for this at some point in time like i yell although there's a, a player accountability but at some point yeah, in time yeah. how did these slip through the cracks like this like there's yeah. no like side step for this there's no way that we can get around it where we start learning instead of just having to succumb to the punishment, as you kind of said. I do agree that there's a way that I mean, and I I'm a, a very far I would I wouldn't want to say like all way the way right wing person, but like I'm very very black and white. There's what things you should do and things you know you shouldn't do, but like very 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 thin line where both of those black and white meet is the gray, and along that gray is where we start learning. And I think that. There's no learning outcome if we don't even know why these people are getting put on the list to begin with. Yeah, Although summer, he found yeah. out later on, but he didn't know he was going to get put on the list because of it. He just thought that, all right, that's a violation, whatever, DQ'd. It's the same thing as, uh, let's say you got caught the same thing. You got caught with a banned card. You just got DQ'd. Like, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to, you know, have that. Sim but at the, does it to say you're a cheater? Yeah, that's, I, I don't see, know that's, the, that's that. the thing, man. I agree with you. Like, rules are rules. There's got to be rules. But... Uh, did he cheat? I mean, 
very strictly if you're like a robot reading the rules, I guess. But like that wasn't the intent, right? Yeah, so that's yeah. where I get it. Yeah. There's, there's a very no guess. It's a, he he did or he didn't, and he did. That's no, and that's what I'm getting at. Like although there is black and white, he did, he didn't. There is a little bit of that. All right, well he did, but how do we stop others? You know what I'm saying? If our world reigning champion can fall through some sort of like crack where he's now getting banned because of a mistake that should have been you know known what's to say that it won't happen to a player who doesn't know any better and he accidentally does the same thing and now he's banned and not because of malicious intent quote unquote but just because of ignorance of not knowing any better of just not reading the handbook you're telling me well, every it's... player who wants to play the game has to go pick up this handbook and yes. read 38 pages of nah, rules man. on top no of one's all gonna, the yeah. difficulties no one's of the game that. you know well, what i'm saying like that's, that's not gonna happen well, obviously, we know that it's definitely not going to happen. But that's the only. Th there's no way we're gonna we're gonna be able to explain all these rules and like know for every single situation when someone's gonna do something that's gonna apply to that. And it, it's just it's just a very hard uh, concept because you know like uh, to to apply it to to the real world, which I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh is the real world. But you know, you, I don't know every single rule in the United States of America. Like I could, I could yeah. break, like, like I could, uh, you know, walking through a red light. That's probably illegal. Yeah, walking you know, illegal in walking. States, so, yeah, so, no. like, there, there's a lot of things that you, no one's gonna come and read to me every single rule. Like that, that's that's where we're coming off with the game and then the rules. Yes, it's just, it's just like we there's just no real good but way there, to. But there's it. there's a gradient in real life too. No one's gonna arrest you for jay. Well, you know, theoretically, uh. no one should arrest you for jaywalking. Be and careful. the other thing, is, the other thing is this: with with a game like Yu-Gi-Oh, some rules I feel like are more important than others. I'm being really honest. No officer, like, Nick Romeo's okay. Like strict, strictly <laughs> strictly speaking, right? Like like what like to me there's rules that are like the rules are the rules i get that but what what paulie did is like to me honestly not that serious versus like if someone's like i'm playing with a banned card it's like dude it is your responsibility to know the ban list like, i mean i got like I got dead ass like last honestly. week <laughs> well, well it's yeah not so, so, that, uh, it's well hold on, i don't mean to cut you off because it's not that he's getting put on the ban list that's cool it's the fact that maybe and it may bring us into our next talking point I get mad at the fact that he gets put on the same level as somebody who's maliciously a cheater. If I went there with the intent to game shark you or rule shark you or take seven minutes to make one play and then get you in time, like that's malicious cheating. Yes, that's, that's something you should deserve the title of a quote unquote cheater for. Yes. Be dropping from an event and re-registering, also taking the round one loss and complying to those rules doesn't seem like quote unquote cheating to me. That's where I kind of get at. There should be different levels or tiers to the violations of these players. Like to be labeled a cheater, just because your offense is the word cheating in it, it just seems <laughs> yeah. like way too overbearing. Like, especially for someone like him who would, doesn't have a malicious bone in his body. He, he wouldn't, he never meant to do that with the intent of getting the upper hand on somebody or, you know, Right, showing yeah, that yeah. he has the power trip he just wanted to play the tournament with the right cards that he knew would probably get into the top you know what i'm saying yeah. it wasn't that he he did it on purpose it was an accident which i get at the same point in time he took his accountability enter with the right deck list the first time it's not that hard of a thing but to get labeled as a cheater are you telling me that that's that's the same as somebody even let's take a Oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Andre, Andre, uh, the Torres. guy who won the yeah, Andre Torres. He won uh, the YCS Bandit. in Brazil, and then eventually, uh, like literally, the very next day, got a ban because he had tokens on top of his extra deck. Although he maliciously said, "Hey, yes. I, I put I played these because I want people to think I'm playing a different thing." All right, you want to label him a cheater because of the malicious intent? All right, cool. That I'll get. But to put Pauly Aronson in the same category as, quote, cheater with someone like that? I don't buy that. That don't sit right with me. Yeah, that's because yeah. it's because there just needs it just needs to be more of a gradient for what you call the things that are happening. Well, there is a as as a so uh, for those who know, I am a I am a Konami judge. There is a there's an element that feels like it got missed. And I don't want to assume the judges didn't do their job, but there like whenever you're doing this stuff you have judges have to do an investigation and that investigation should have immediately been hey Polly, why did you drop and then re-register which to a side point i can go into open ai or chat gpt and ask it to write me a resume to be ceo of facebook and that will happen that will do that 
how do we have a system that does not keep track of when a player does this? How are we not at a point exactly. with Konami's system where, hey, this person dropped, they cannot re-register. So they're us it shouldn't have even gotten to that point. It should have told Polly, oh, like, hey, like yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Polly, you can't register because you dropped out. And he'd been like, oh, okay, now I know. Yes. But yeah, I'll, I just guess I'm not playing today. I'll I guess go I'm play not playing tomorrow or the next event. Yeah, exactly. Because There's it's little... 2023 and we have systems that can keep track of how many grains of sand are in the world, but it can't identify a unique 12 or 15 digit number that says, hey, this person dropped out. They can't re-register. There's like, a there's a tech gap with Konami sometimes, man. Like, really, honestly, because it was only, just think about how recent Neuron was. And then when you go to like an event, like a YCS, they fucking, they're still posting paper lists on the walls, man. Like, it, this is a Konami problem in terms of just being technologically like illiterate. I, I mean, it, you're right, it is 2023. How the fuck, you just identify by by a COSI number and then it's like, all right. Yeah, yeah. the like, same thing that we all yeah. use to register. Like, hey, I don't understand either, that's man. how it's, right? That's what yeah. should have stopped it. It should have stopped him from registering immediately. Honestly, but, you, you could probably even have a program like identify banned cards. You feed the piece of paper into a machine and it identifies banned cards and kicks the list. Sorry. No, well, no. To, and to that, I'm glad you brought that up. To that, every judge is supposed to review, like a judge is supposed to review the list every time somebody registers. And people make mistakes. I get it. But I'm i'm curious what the accountability like paulie's taking accountability and that's you know on him where is the accountability for the regional that was organizing it the judge that allowed those these things to happen there's not a clear like just like konami is like this person's banned here's the reason why but no explanation where is the actual like hey we messed up this was our responsibility we didn't do that by the people that organized it maybe they did but there's just this it's frustrating to see like a player like Polly, and this isn't necessarily just because he's a nice guy, but the general in general, like he's like, yeah, I fucked up. But as somebody who's a systems builder and knows kind of how these things work, that it shouldn't have even gotten to that point. It should have been Polly, you dropped and you can't re-register, and he'd been like, all right, like you said, X, I'm not playing Yu-Gi-Oh today. I'll play again somewhere else, and I'll learn from that. Because as Nick, you were alluding to, like. There is a learning aspect here that we're missing. Like, is the point uh, points of punishments are not to hurt people; it's to help them learn something. And this doesn't show anybody what ha it just shows. Like, hey, if you make a simple mistake and don't read every single piece of the rule book, you might get banned from playing the game, which doesn't help player players staying in. But I went off on a big tangent. The judge should have done an investigation and just talking to. Polly for like five minutes found out this is was his intention he wasn't trying to cheat the tournament he just messed up his deck list by accident and we probably would have been told hey you can't play but and you get a warning but i'm not gonna ban you for it mm -hmm. right. should, in my opinion I go actually you go joe before we go I, I was gonna say he also should have just talked to a judge as well he could have come up to somebody and be like hey can i do this like i feel like that's also a gray area where i would have been like i want to say he did because in this conversation he said I, I went into it with the round one loss, meaning he had to have gone to the judge and said, hey, I'm re-registering. I'll take the round one L. I know I'm about to have it. You know what I'm saying? There's no way that they put him in without the, without the round one loss because it had right. already started or whatever. And he had said beforehand he knew that he was going to do this. That it was done already. Like, he had to have gotten gotten through it. There's no way. He, he made yeah. it clear that it, it was like Interesting. That. Yeah, I hear you. But Again. I do see what you were trying to go with with that. But, like, he admitted he made it clear. Like he had, uh, uh, let me just not, you know. Yeah, he said, to be clear, I never sat down to play round one. I stated my intention to drop and to exactly. register. I was transparent about what I was doing and why. Which exactly. tells, that's, so. I don't think he's saying that to his audience. I think he's saying, and it, I mean, we could, you could also ask him, but it's a very like, this was what I, I thought I could do this. Somebody told me I could, I asked somebody. Cause Polly also strikes me as like, if he's confused, he's going to ask somebody. He's not like, he has no problem asking questions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, oh, kudos to him for sort of showing the poise of, like, I'm a world champion and this can happen to me, so take it as a learning lesson and I'll see you guys in a bit. I'm st like, And at least he's like, I'm going to keep practicing, I'm going to keep playing. Real champion. Yeah. I'm really hoping he's not banned very long either. Like, I hope they don't renew He's that. at six months. Yeah. 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 Well, because so, it seems like they can just renew it whenever, so I, I hope they don't do that to him. I think That's it would true. be a particularly bad, I think it would be a particularly bad look for the community and for him if out of nowhere he's just extended. Yeah. The band, because 
Konami, as much as we give them shit, does monitor this stuff. Very clearly they do. So I, it might e it might even be a situation where his ban gets shortened because of how he approached it. And as long as he doesn't do anything, he's not yes. supposed to. They, they do that sometimes. Like, I remember the part of the reason that uh, Coder's ban was extended was because he did not take it super well. Or not no, extended. Right it was, or rather, it was just, it was very long. No, no, sorry. I, yeah. I am actually talking about Coder. Coder, uh, he, it didn't get extended, but his ban was long. And I think it was because he didn't take it super well. I'm frankly not really sure why Susu's ban got extended again because I, I watch his uh, stream, but I don't like, uh, I kind of like deleted Twitter. So I don't really know like how he reacted to that. That could be part of it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. No, I just think that if we're or if we're gonna close out on something, I, I really do believe that there should be different levels to it, uh, and I do believe that they should even if they put like three to like fifteen words as to why this person was placed in the banlist, re-registered, a, a fish dropped and re-registered the same event, like that's yeah. all we need. Now everyone knows. Oh shit, not to do that. Uh, stated intent of playing tokens for not playing that deck. All right, now we know not to do that. Uh, whatever can get you, you know, I don't know, drawing six cards, putting one back and stating that it, you just accidentally drew five, you know, right. or drew six, like all that shit. Like what, regardless of what it is, those should be the reasons. And then we should have different tiers for the exact, uh, I would say violation, whether it's a technical violation or something like cheating, something like in Polly's uh, case, I wouldn't say would be something like a cheating. I would say that's like a technical mistake. And not, like I said, everyone's got to be accountable for mistakes, but I just cannot stand that, that that label on there. So maybe if we just change the labels or even add more labels and just make it a little bit more diverse or easier to digest, uh, I think that it would probably sit a little bit players with others and we get more of like uh, what Nick was alluring to, more of a learning uh, point than more of a just punishment, like handing out solemn judgments to people, you know? Yeah, it's Fisticus level is. two, punch someone on stream. Yeah, yeah, Deadass, ass you know what i'm saying or it had be had alcoholic you know or paraphernalia on stream right. or on a right. venue because they should state that too that if, hey it's this treat your house is quote unquote going to be treated as a konami venue like right. you can't be displaying any of that shit like they, they should just let it be known and maybe they do but like you should advertise that a little bit more that shouldn't just be the fine print of like a 35 page fucking manual you know what i'm saying like that's what I'm kind of getting at. That's be something, that, and that's the reason to let people be known why they're getting banned. Give them a little bit more insight. Uh, if they appeal it, tell them why they're being denied or why they're being accepted, or you know what was given through, what light wasn't shining, as you said, what investigation showed and what it didn't show. So, because I think some people would be like to know not only for their own sake, but just for the sake of these content creators. Like you know, you never know when someone's going to come back or someone's going to get extended. We, we may be seeing Polly now, but maybe he goes to a venue and just doesn't even go to a venue, but like just steps inside because he's going to go to a, uh, watch a movie and there's a movie playing in the same venue and he yeah. gets extended or something like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like there's some, yeah. some crazy shit could happen. And now we find out that he just gets extended and he doesn't know why, you know what I'm saying? Cause he didn't register an event. You know what I'm saying? Who cares if he's at the same convention center? You're what you're telling me I can't go to the same convention center on the same day at the same time and the different half of it. That's crazy. That's like, I say Patriot, I thought this was America. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but before we close out, I think we're starting to run out of life points here, guys. Do you guys have any other final words or anything like that? You guys want to get about the, either what we were talking about today. Cause we kind of got into like a little bit of heated debate. Or, or maybe anything you guys want to get off your mind or anything like that. We'll start with uh, Nick, then go with Joe, then Mel. Um, yes, I do have something I want to get off my mind. Um, I would like for Konami to release less product. I feel like I'm having a hard time keeping up. And uh, I feel like I'm spending a lot of money on very few <laughs> cards instead of sets that actually matter. And I'm starting to resent that a lot, actually. Yeah, be less money for them. Pod, yeah. Would yeah. you say X? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you. As we talked about it on the podcast uh, not too long ago, if not the yes. last episode. Yes. So, so, I, I, but I, yeah. yes, I've been thinking about it though, and I am beginning to resent it, and I really wish they would slow the fuck down. For me, mm, honestly, I, I, I am the the one thing I want to get off my chest is I love this type of meta where many decks are thriving. And even though you can't prepare for what's what's coming around the corner, I think that's that's just the epitome of like what a card game should be, where any deck can just come out of nowhere and just take down tier one, you know? 
Um, so I'm I'm a big fan of what's going on. I'm a big fan of uh, the current current situation we're in. So let's keep it let's keep it going. If you want to listen to our takes, please listen to Heart of the Podcast. I can't believe my co-host didn't say anything about that because I thought that's what I was asking us about. Uh, It kind of was, but, you know, whatever. Final thoughts on everything. Yeah, go ahead. uh, And I guess the last thought is, you know, if people react to bad things happening like Polly does, I think that Konami might be a little more open to responding to these kinds of things uh, in terms of the bans, but shout out to you Polly, for being a class act in a situation that really wasn't didn't feel like it was very fair to you we definitely went into the nitty-gritty here and i love Polly. i've had him on the podcast he's a you know returning uh, guest uh i've played with him not like against him but played with him in the same uh event multiple times uh, i most people don't know but i saved that man's life he wouldn't be here without your boy axe here this uh mm-hmm. he's, he's verified that statement he so. owes you i have one thing to add i forgot this off my chest yeah. I love that the 25th rarity collection exists. That thing is so fucking confusing with what the rarity is mm-hmm. like, which now what's the highest rarity for things? I'm seeing quarter century rare Ash Blossom for $150. How is that the most, ex- how is that the most expensive version of Ash? I don't understand that label sucks. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. bad. <laughs> I think it's just the prettiest version of it right now. Facility. Ulti Ash when? Ulti, uh, I'm actually surprised that hasn't happened already. Sorry, nah, we're real gonna... ultimate rare Ash, not this quarter century rare bullshit. Um, one of those. <laughs> I, lo- I love this quarter century. It's it was such a good idea. I think it's great. Like, I just it's hard for me to keep track of what's I like, believe what everything is. I I think the prettiest one is that like rarity that where like the cards look like they have that like sparkly sheen over them. Not not a uh, st- uh, starlight. It, I think it's called uh, prismatic collectors rare. I think that's yeah, very pretty. I don't like those. They, uh, they but yeah, have like DT collector rares. I'm not. Mm. <laughs> oh, you weren't a dual terminal enjoyer. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I was not one of those. Yeah, Word. not me personally. Word. I uh, <laughs> I, pi- I picked up some new uh, Dark Laws and some Pharisees. They look pretty fucking nice, I gotta say. Also, and shout out to TCG player when you can re- when you can tell which cards they haven't received or pulled when their thing says image coming soon and they just don't have a copy <laughs> of it. That's why they can't. Yeah, it's yeah, never yeah. an image. It's, yeah. Think of it now, guys. The future is. 2026 and there's yeah. still no pictures for that set probably yep. not the honestly. cards are spiking for some random reason because the card mm-hmm. is set is All... printed too soon well, so here's the thing i guess because we're ending so what like valley and smashers just came out what is like the next thing on the horizon i don't even know anymore i can't even fucking keep track the pot we have collection. phantom nightmare we have phantom nightmare Phantom Nightmare. Okay, that's the actual answer. And then um, we'll have the Battles of Legend, which is going to reprint uh, the Phantom War. Structure deck Fire Kings. No, I don't care about Fire Kings. You say that now, motherfucker. Oh my god. He says that shit now. Yeah, they're taking I, over. I had that same view point, so, <laughs> No, I don't give a shit about that. What I'm, what, what I'm saying is I'll have to. Uh, I can't believe Konami's going to make me buy uh, U Bell stuff. For my oh hero, God, that's on you. No, that's it's for my. You. It's not. I'm not gonna play it. I just collect hero cards and. So then that's on. That's on me. Yeah, well, accountability. Is... Did we not just learn nothing about accountability? No, you bell is to you what it's Gate Guardian me. was to Xavier. Yeah. Oh, Gate Guardian. <laughs> it's gonna get support though too in Phantom. That Nightmare, fucking dog yep. shit card coming out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's now be, Fire it's King. Gonna honestly, right. it's gonna be honestly, right. if the Fire King stuff is good enough, if and it's it seems like it's a strategic tech, it'll be cheap. Then uh, you know, I consider picking it up. Yeah, I'm going to be going Gate Guardian from Rogue to Rogue Point Five. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. you're gonna, you make fun of Max with it, with Gate Guardian. We're going to see Player X top four OTS championship. <laughs> Didn't, you Gate Didn't you win already with uh, Gate yeah. Guardian? I, I topped one time at Gate Guardians when I played. Yeah, that's you know, what I'm I, I came up there and summoned the boss, you know, the monsters. I set the chance and shit, you know? I had to make sure I let niggas know. Of course, absolutely. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to say the rhyme every time. <laughs> Every My, single uh, time I summoned uh, the combined one, it was I definitely said the run. But we're starting to run out of life points, guys. Before we start dying over here, I uh, just want to thank you guys for listening, tuning in, and all that stuff. Be sure to go down to the link tree link down below. Click on it. Follow all of our social sites. Give away when we hit milestones. You guys know the deal. Shout out to Unplug Gaming the Man List. Go check out the Discord. Also in the description box down below. Click on it. Join this shit. If you pop up in their store in Manly's New York, be sure to mention the semi-limited podcast and they'll be sure to hook you guys up. Also, Brad, Mr. Perfect, streaming every Saturday night on Twitch. 
at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to go check his Twitch down below in the link tree. And then, as I mentioned earlier in this in the podcast, at the end of the year, sometime between the next month, uh, probably I would say middle of December ish, we're going to be doing a live recorded podcast episode, so you, the listener, can join in. The link to the Discord is also in our link tree link, so be sure to join that Discord link, be a part of the Discord, and be ready to join that semi limited live section where I'll be hosting the episode with a bunch of talking points and having all of you listeners tune in live and calling you into the room and onto the podium to speak and give your thoughts and maybe communicate with other people just how we are right now but right in your ear so be sure to get check out for that it'll be something really cool to attend and i'll be dropping more info about that probably within the next couple weeks or so uh with that being said guys we are all out of life points uh you guys want to plug in your spots one more time yeah nick and joe do you want to talk about our podcast what's it called Hey everyone, welcome to Heart of the Podcast with MSDC. <laughs> it's called Heart of the Podcast. You should go listen yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Heart if of the you podcast. if you don't listen to it, um, they're gonna bring back uh, calamities. Yeah, to three. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you don't God, listen God, to God, it, God. Uh, if you don't yeah. listen to it, you're gonna draw the bricks every every game. So if you, if you don't listen yeah, to it, uh, if you don't listen to it, they're gonna start printing uh, Cloudian support, and who nobody wants that. And let me tell you, let me. Let me let me tell you uh, how where to where to find us. Um, Mel, can you tell them where to find us? <laughs> yeah, Art of the Podcast on Spotify and all of your favorite podcast listening things. I can't. Could I? I'm sorry, X. I cannot control them. I don't. I, that was not what I it's thought fair. they were going to do. I never wanted them to be controlled. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But they also have a YouTube link. I'll be linking down below as well. I mentioned Block Dragon and Heroes once. I Why you that. weren't supposed to at all? Oh, X loves yeah, it. Zero, great. it was the golden number. It was so. zero. <laughs> <laughs> the fans love it. The fans no, love it. No one likes it. With, with that being said, guys, we'll do one of your guys' uh, outros. I am Player X. Wow, amazing. You two, you all are great. <laughs> we didn't say the order. Yeah, we yeah, don't, we didn't he say said it. the order. Oh, I'm I'm Nick. I am Vanquish Soul Caesar targeting Vanquish Soul Joe. <laughs> And I'm Jorge, the marathon finisher. Yeah. I'm Mel, actually. Now I'm Mel. No, you can't be two names. And the Yo, podcast. wow. Okay, hang on. Let me be Jorge. Shut up, Joe. Joseph, <laughs> shut up. God, and I am up. Player X. You've been listening to the Semi Limited Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. Go check out the heart of the podcast. I'll link it down below. Good fucking MSTC. Shut up. <laughs>